Lou Alvire. Feel my boner everywhere, baby. It <laughs> takes up so much. I won't, but you will. Let's <laughs> 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 see what she did. Yeah. Mow, mow, baba, moo, ma, ma, moo. Elvira. Everybody remembers Cassandra Peterson. She was Elvira for a long time. Yeah. Mistress of the Dark. I was talking about that documentary I'm watching on Shutter called In Search of Darkness, and they're talking to people who not only made the films in the 80s and, you know, was uh, acted in them or whatever, but they talked to a lot of people who hosted movie shows. And so Elvira Peterson, uh, sorry, Cassandra Peterson is um, <clears throat> featured pretty prominently throughout because she was Elvira for a long, long time. But she was in the news last year because she came out in September. I think she'd been married back in the day. She's 70 now. Uh, but her partner has been a woman for 20 years. And she was talking about how uh, she lost a whole bunch of followers on social media when she came out. And I'm just curious, like, what's the Venn diagram between Elvira fans and people who are on social media? Facebook, bro. They're all old. Facebook. Yeah. See, this is how my brain works now. When I talk about social media, I don't ever think about Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think about Twitter. I think about Instagram. I think about TikTok. I guarantee Facebook. I forget about Facebook. Facebook was probably, she probably had millions of fan page on like a Facebook fan page is probably her biggest thing. Or her, she might even have just have like people who write into her website and stuff. Right. Dear Elvira, I don't my like that you're queer. My dearest mistress. <laughs> One of the things that happened is on my social media, I won't say which platform, in one day, the day after the book came out, I lost 11,000 people. Just said, Elvira, you lied to me. I don't respect you anymore. Goodbye. But I got 60,000 new followers the same day. You know, I knew that there was going to be some horny old men out there who, <laughs> <laughs> who were just not going to like the fact that they didn't have a chance with me anymore, you know? And I hate to tell them they already didn't have a chance with me anyway. <laughs> you That's lied true. to me, Elvira! You, lied to, you me. lied to me with your big old boobs, you know? <laughs> I'm not even mad about the uh, uh, the lesbian thing. I thought you were actually Elvira! <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you were Cassandra Peterson. <laughs> what?! You lied to me with your with your long come hither fingernails and your <laughs> big mile high hair. I just wonder. And your red lips. Hey, push-up bras are also a lie, so. All right. I just wonder <laughs> how you keep a secret that long. Not that you can keep it inside, but the fact that no one has found you out. Like, how do you keep a partner secret for 20 years when you're an actress? Like, you, your whole point of being an actress is to be out, get publicity, and you, how do you keep that a secret from people? Well, if you don't engage in PDA, it's yeah. pretty easily kept. Yeah, if you're just careful people, about it, but also... Wouldn't people wonder if you're, like, but out she's and about? also known only really as Elvira. So if she's out of her costume, most people don't even know yes. who she is. Yeah, and that's, that's why, point. But that's why she kept it secret, because she was like, look, this Elvira character is supposed to be this foxy chick, mm -hmm. you know, hence the 11,000 old horny guys who got mad. I, I was worried that if I announced I was no longer living the straight life, my fans would be feel lied to, call me a hypocrite, and abandon me. So for a long time, that's what it was. And so kudos to her partner that was like, yeah, 20 years on, maybe it's time to, you know. But she netted 50,000 uh, new followers. So well, whatever. I mean, that happened to me. The first time I posted a picture of my boyfriend and I together, I lost, like, no joke, like 70. I know it's not as many, but I lost, like, 70 followers on Instagram the day that I posted that picture, because I was like, you horny dudes. <laughs> it's like a picture of me kissing another guy, and you're like, well, screw this. Well, <laughs> I thought I had a chance, and now it's over. Right. I mean, for a long time, it's probably, if it happens at all anymore, it I can't imagine anybody would stand for it. But for a long time in radio, if you were a woman, you know, some stations would tell you, like your boss would go, hey, don't talk about your husband. Yeah. You're supposed to be the hot, mm -hmm. available Single, chick. Yeah. You know, or they at least... At least Give off the impression that, that you're out chance, there. Yeah, right? right. You know, which you look back on it and you're like, that's ridiculous. But that's kind of how it was for a lot of women. I encountered that one time in comedy. Uh, I was doing a weekend at the improv here in town. And uh, the comic, he had all these rules of everything we couldn't, could and couldn't say. We had to be squeaky, squeaky clean. Absolutely 100% clean. No this is a well-known comic? I don't know 
how well known he was. I had never heard of him, but I think I think people know him. Um, you had to be squeaky clean. You don't want to say his name? I don't know if I should. But I got off stage, and by the way, he's filthy, absolutely dirty, filthy. Like so, on he his, just wanted you to be filth or clean to so he could, the shock factor, yeah. right? So I get off stage after like the first night of shows, and he comes up to me, he goes, "Hey, don't do any jokes about your relationship." And I was like, why? And he's like, because dudes don't want to hear chicks talking about their boyfriend on stage. And I was just like, I mean, okay. that Call part is What's absolutely true. Yeah. Colin Kane. Oh, oh Colin Kane. Yeah. He's barely funny. Well, he was so, so nice. shock value dirty that I was just like, I can't listen to this. Like it was it on his way up. to When the you're stage, that good looking, you better be hilarious. On his way up to the stage, he was like, which one of you girls is on your period? I can smell it. And that's how he opened. And that was my first experience. I was a pre- I was only doing comedy a couple of years at this point. That was my first experience in being told that I had to be clean and none of the rest of the show was clean, where I was like, well, this hypocrite. I was oh, this so guy mad. can say whatever he wants. He's very, very good looking. Yeah, he was in here hot. about 10 years ago, and I was like, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how long this guy's been doing stand-up. He has but only fans. This is never going to last. Oh, he does? He sure that does. That makes sense. But yeah, he he pulled me aside, or we were in the green room or whatever after the show, and he was like, yeah, don't talk about your boyfriend. People don't want to hear about you being in a relationship. And I was just like, okay, guy, like, how many more restrictions are you going to put on my set? Like, Jesus, you know? Well, all right. He's at the Comedy Club of uh, Kansas City this week. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, this week being September 21st of last year. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he's got that OnlyFans money. I mean, he didn't need to do stand-up anymore. There you go. Maybe there's something funny on there. His mer- his merch is shirts that say "Eat clean, talk dirty." They were in 2014. Pardon too. me. Yeah, he yeah. sold a lot of them. They were because it was like broy douchebags in the in the audience. All these guys in tank tops. So he sold tank tops that said "Eat clean, talk dirty." Here's a tweet from him last year. Do you prefer making out or anal? <laughs> Twenty four likes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he, yeah, I haven't heard that name in a long time. He was in here about a decade ago, and I was like, okay, I mean, I get me. He's a good looking dude, boy. I didn't know where he came from, but like, yeah, he, you got to be really funny if you're going to be. Um, he told me, don't curse, don't do this, don't do that, don't talk mm-hmm. about your relationship. Yeah. I was like, oh, geez, man, I'm doing seven minutes. Like, uh huh. <laughs> you Come on, man. <laughs> right. You just cut me down to two and a half. Yeah. Mm. Alan, I thought Don't Look Up was great. That's Dustin in Georgia. Hey, Dustin, Listen, we agree. Hey, it's Dustin. <laughs> hey, I, I thought. thought you suck because you don't like that movie. I loved it. Maybe you just a lot don't of people, get it. <laughs> a lot of people did like that movie. I was just very, uh, very forcefully not one of them. Uh, I think it's a very good movie. What I was watching this weekend, and I it was only on last night, but they, I think they released two episodes Right off the rip was The Righteous Gemstones. And man, Great show. I love that show. Yeah. John Goodman is one of our national treasures, and I'm going to be so upset when he passes Me away too. because he is. Thank God he lost all that weight. So great on that show, I know. So he'll, hopefully he'll be around longer, and he's so good on that show, and he's so sincere in this show that's very wacky and weird. He plays his character so straight and so just to like completely different than everybody else on the show, and it's just fantastic. And it's weirdly violent at times. Where it's like kind of upsetting, mm-hmm. but it adds to What's the humor it of it. Uh, it's about a family that is, they're like televangelists. Televangelists. Oh. And it's very funny, though. It's very dark. But there's been a lot, because of COVID and everything, a lot of time in between the first and second season. Mm hmm. Yeah. My daughter was watching an episode of SpongeBob, and I heard John Goodman's voice. I don't know if he's playing King Neptune or somebody like that. I was like, "Oh God, no, no, he's playing Santa." I'm sorry, it was like a, it was like a Christmas uh, episode or something, and John Goodman was Santa. He's played Santa, on and I was like, "Oh God, I love John Goodman." Futurama as well. Has he? Yeah, yeah. It's like a Santa robot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John Goodman is just fantastic, and that show is so. The lady that plays uh, Judy, mm-hmm. Gems, she's so funny. <laughs> like it's. It's to the point where uh, God. you have Danny McBride and Adam, what's his name? Uh, Adam, uh, Adam. Uh, Jack Black. Junior. Yeah, Adam Devine. Adam Devine. Yeah. And they're like the fourth and fifth funniest people on that show. Yes. 
compared to like these other characters. It's so funny. To me, Danny McBride is kind of, I, I regard him in the same way I do Jonah Hill, where I think they play the same character in everything they do. He absolutely does. Yeah, He's very, but I do. But it's a great character. It is funny. He's, it's a very he plays funny Kenny character. Powers in every movie yeah. and thing he does. That's but. his That's his one note thing, but yeah. he plays it very well, and it's very funny. And then, Except then, in Alien Covenant, then he was just like a regular dude. Yeah. That uh, Kenny Powers character in This Is The End. Is that what it is? Or yeah. um, Is that what it's called? The one where... This Is The End, yeah. Where the, yeah. God, that's... I love that movie. I feel like that movie is underrated. And just him when he's like waking up, making all the breakfast and like drinking the syrup and pouring it on his body. I'm like, I love this. This is amazing. I liked him in Pineapple Express, but like I couldn't get into Eastbound and Down, which oh, Really? I, yeah. And oh I, my God, Eastbound and Down was the best it's show It's probably ever. an objectively funny show, it's but I just so You gotta like that character though. Yeah, You have to like that character. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I should go back to it. It's so funny. Isn't Don Johnson in it? John, Jesus' dad? or John, Don Johnson's in the second season. So the first season I love. The second season, is it kind of dips. Third season gets funny He's again. like a hillbilly and baseball then, player or something? Yeah, yeah. Basically, John Rocker, who played for the Atlanta Braves, they basically made him into a caricature of him. And he's just this boisterous, loud, just kind of an a-hole <laughs> baseball player. Yeah. That was... Really only good at the beginning of his career, but he was able to stick around for a while, and then he took steroids to well, get back in the league. It's, wasn't it's he such also a like, show. I'm famous, I'm the guy, yeah. kiss the ring type of stuff? Yeah. yeah. I never. I caught like a couple episodes here and there, but I never followed Man, it. Man, it was such a funny show. In the last season, they closed very strong, because he moves from being a baseball player into being like a TV analyst. Oh, nice. And it's perfect for him. Um, Alan Cox show after hours line. You can leave a message there anytime you like. Just something quick. If you need to drop something, two one six nine eight six eighty nine zero three. Hey, Alan Dexter Backman. Happy New Year to you, Bill Mary Pound Cake. So, my two year old daughter is a big fan of Peter Gabriel now, um, which I think is great. Uh, it's just kind of weird. So, uh, you could. Hit the post on In Your Ass by Peter Gabriel, which he looks to right now. But if you could do that, I'd really appreciate that. Hate so bad. De- Dex always wants me to hit the post. He's not he giving up on hitting it. the post. In Your Eyes. I haven't heard In Your Eyes in a long time. Hold on. Let me. Oh, I probably know where that is. 100.7 WOBA Buzz. The buzzer. In the middle of a Monday work day type thing. Ah, Peter Gabriel Law, God from Genesis, doing the uh, solo thing. He got fat, he got bald. After he left, got a goatee, and uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe uh, when he looked in your eyes, he saw a reflection of a cheeseburger. I don't know. And, uh, Peter Gabriel on the buzzer. Uh, no, it's awesome. <laughs> I haven't heard yeah, that song that in a hundred years. Yeah. That wasn't good. That wasn't there. Yeah, well, it's there you all right. Do. You, yeah. you know, you normally do pretty good on There those. you go, Dex. That one wasn't the... Sorry, pal. The best moment. Hey, man, radio is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Boy, uh, part, present company excluded. I don't know what's <laughs> <laughs> or included rather. Uh, I have no idea, but uh, Dex keeps trying. Thank you, pal. Uh, so let me lay this at your feet because our mm-hmm. own uh, Mary Santora. <gasps> anytime you see her in photos now, she is grinning ear to ear mm-hmm. with good reason, right? Because whereas before. She looked like she could eat uh, corn on the cob through a chain link fence. Yes. Now. It's called shark teeth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now she pearly whites, mm-hmm. straight, yeah. gleaming, right? So I don't know if this is a goof or not, but I did think of you because you still have to wear like the thing, right? Like I have to wear a... retainers until right. the beginning of March, but then after that, I don't have to wear them anymore. Just a. a is it time. going to make you nervous to not wear them at all? Because my understanding yes. was like. Teeth start moving. So. Well, I have to wear them to bed, but I, I oh, have to I wear okay. because they just kind of got into the position we want them in. Yep. So I have you to keep them there for the next couple yeah. months, and then it's just at night. Um, but yeah, it does make me nervous. Can your teeth more. relapse? Your teeth can relapse, bro. <laughs> okay. They can go back to their old ways. Yeah, you've got to keep them where you want them, right. or they'll run away. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, one of the people who, um, depending on who you talk to, Google Glass was kind of an early flop or they didn't have it figured out the way you know they're trying to roll out the glasses where you'd see you know your computer screen and mm-hmm. the lenses or whatever and so a lot of the people that worked on that project have gone on to other things and one of the guys who worked on google glass is trying to make a smart retainer hmm. so that you can text with your tongue 
Now, I don't know if this is a goof. I don't know. You figure if you're in research and development, you're just your job is to come up with ideas. You Isn't know? that kind of what talk to text is, though? Yeah, I guess. I mean, for people who, I don't know if this is for people who are paralyzed or. Oh, yeah, your hands don't work. I was like, who who needs this? But even talk to text, you would be able to figure out without putting something in your mouth. And somebody's got to put this in your mouth and take it out for if your hands don't work. Yeah. It's called Silent Speller. That's the name of the project. And it allows people to send texts using a high-tech dental retainer to spell spell words with your tongue. Tara. I'm like, maybe this is just a big, long con to get guys better with their tongues. Yeah! Oh, my God. You and Frank got back together again? Yeah, me and Frank Durst got back together (laughs) again. Because he got that uh, silent speller. He never heard the old Kinnison material, so he bought one of these. Uh, They say that the system identifies letters with 97% accuracy. Yeah, but then you have to spell out every word you want yeah. to say or every yeah. word you want to text. Yeah. Tracking the movement of the user's tongue. Is there anything we won't track anymore? I don't need you big Google looking at my tongue. Calories, to be honest with oh, you. I don't need the tongue. Calories, yeah. So they're working on this, you know. People who were uh, the lead techs on Google Glass are working on this uh, smart retainer. So just something to consider. They're already putting it through uh, tests and, you know, again, I don't, not quite sure who this is for. This seems like something where they go, you know what? Let's make it. See who buys it. The market will come to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I imagine it would be good for people that don't have the use of their hands, but I don't think this is going to be something that that people are going to start like, like I, I, I don't want to use that. I don't think no. anybody here would want to use that. No. Well, these are always things that I assume have medical applications, yeah. like speech therapists. You know, if they could track how somebody's tongue moves to form words. But it's not about the they're... words. It's about spelling it out. Well, that's one application of this. But I would think that if they, I mean, all it is is sensors. So if you had like, let's say speech pathologists were like, oh, this way we can track like if we have kids with, with um, speech impediments or mm-hmm. learning disabilities, like Maybe if we know how their tongue moves, it'll... Yeah, we can shock them every, <laughs> every time, time it, it hits the wrong that way. spot. Yeah. Right. We'll That's right. Anymore. Aversion therapy. But what if you were in the library, let's say on campus, right? Somebody's in college and they're in the library and they go, ooh, I can't be loud in here and I don't want to use my already silent texting on my phone. <laughs> or my very quiet computer keys. <laughs> <laughs> I never figured out how to turn the clicks off. On my uh, phone uh, that texting. That is something that is insane to me when I see someone using their phone and they have all the sounds on their phone on <laughs> still. And they're, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> clicking it around and it's like, what is, who are you? You want to hear something sad? Some people like the noise. They like the vibration yeah. of it and, you know. Yeah, the vibration is one thing, but the noise is. Mm. There was a point in 2020 lockdown where I turned the sound on my phone so I wouldn't feel so lonely. <laughs> I, I can understand that though. On my life, I just wanted to suck. <laughs> I swear to God. So I think, lonely. I mean, Did it work? I just wanted some sort of sound. Some, so, you know, you're interacting with somebody yes. or something. I can <laughs> understand you. that. Because I'm like, if I can hear it texting, it makes it a little bit more. <laughs> oh my. It makes it How real. doesn't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. How do you possibly understand no, that? I, I no one understands that. that. It, because when you are like surrounded by silence, any bit of noise Beautiful. makes makes you feel like I, you're doing something. Right. And, because, and we were also single at that time. You both had significant others that you saw all the time during quarantine. I mean, like March, April, when we were not allowed to do anything or go anywhere. And I was having a mental breakdown. It's me too. Me and you were struggling, man, during that time I, last I was year, considering suicide. My, my mom, she was like, you need to get on something. You, yeah. I thought I was going deaf, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was dealing with tinnitus. I was hearing voices in my head. Yes, I wanted some interaction. I did, the, I did that, where so, I was just like, I'm going to leave the sound on, because then it's, I don't know, it makes this... So, Poundcake, if she made herself feel less lonely with the clicks of her phone, what did you do? I did had, you have anything along those lines? I talked to my mom every day. Every day, and I cried because I cried. I think I even cried to Mary. I, I couldn't cry here because we had a, we had a few moments. <laughs> I, I cried. I had to cry. Gotta get it out, man. I, I had a mental breakdown. Like I feel like something was my brain was too hot, and I was boiling. So I had to like let off some steam. <laughs> too hot. Hmm. 
Hmm. My brain was too hot. Brain it was, was too, too hot. hot. The, the block, block, block was too hot. hot His brain. brain was too hot. Yeah. Talking about brain. My mom brought hot that up brain. on Sunday when I went to go get my haircut. I stopped at her house. She was just like, oh, "You got a haircut? Yeah, mm-hmm. it looks good." She was like, "Don't you know that you you were like in a different place this time last year?" I was like, "I don't want to talk about it." She's like, "You you were going through it all because your ears were ringing." I was like, "I didn't know what it was going. I didn't know what was going on. I thought like I was hearing things. I thought God was calling me home." <laughs> <laughs> well, then it was more the the tinnitus than the loneliness. It was everything because I felt like I I couldn't relate, I couldn't deal with the tinnitus because I was lonely, and then I was alone with my thoughts, and then my thoughts were overpowered by the ringing. So it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm being haunted. Yeah, I, that I get the ringing. I get. I, and, I, and this was back w- during the time where everyone was uh, quarantining, so we were doing the broadcast from home a, a little at that time too, and my ears were still still ringing. So I was very isolated. I didn't have any friends. I wasn't having any, any sex. Yep, me neither. Um, oh, oh, I was going through it. Huh. But we only did two shows. Well, we Bill's did two shows at Squifle my place, or, and then you did some shows last year. Like the last, was in like the last December, yeah, December, yeah. Yeah. But like we're here. But all of 2020 was rough. You guys remember, you guys called me out on it. You're like, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I remember I, that. I need yeah. to know if I need to hire somebody new. <laughs> Somebody that could hear, do the job. And, yeah, I said, right. and I said I was okay, but I wasn't really feeling okay. So you Why lied to me. Why did you lie? To, f- to f- save face. I yeah. can't have you lying to me. Why are people so terrified of being alone with their own thoughts? Mine wasn't about being alone with my own thoughts. That's what he said, though. I was so lonely because I'm such a people person. I didn't realize yeah. how much I fed off of the interactions <laughs> with other people. Mm. I love being in crowds. I you love don't know what you got till events. it's gone. Right. Yeah. And that was the first time in my life that I wasn't doing that stuff. I, for everybody, that was the first time we weren't doing anything. And I'm like, man, I do not to. like this. This is not the life for me. Hmm. I a really pirate's enjoyed. life. I there, loved it. There was definitely times during... Where there was, you know, some tough times, but there was a lot that I really enjoyed. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm not, like I really enjoyed it. Honestly, after living that life and being forced to slow down and take a mm-hmm. break, now alone time is very important to me. Where oh, I'm like, shut up. I no, I'm serious. Where it's not <laughs> traitor. <laughs> it's not as much as like because before COVID, I was out every night of the week doing stand-up or traveling or doing this or doing that and there was never even a moment to myself whereas then having all of that time to myself now i feel like there's a nice happy medium where i'm like i need a balance of you know going I, out time and alone i like time. that it called out all the people who prided themselves on being introverts not and they close. absolutely were not yeah i'm an introvert no you're not i'm an introverted extrovert does that make sense like i like being in public like don't yeah, talk to me right. <laughs> I got to uh, take a break here. I'm going to have another $1,000 for you at 430. When we get back here, though, I'll have those Volbeat and Ghost tickets. They're doing a co-headlining tour in the spring. That'll get them through Columbus uh, February 7th, just a few weeks away if you want to go to that. We'll be back. It's-